big moron! <laughs> hey, moron! Duh! <laughs> look at me! I'm the Wawa Water Boy, duh! Read between the lines. Well, hello. It's not a good morning. Although I was able to get up out of bed, I don't know why. I think I should have stayed under the covers. This is the Monday morning hangover slash walk of shame. Walk of shame. You know, I'm going to tell you how bad it is, okay? You know, yesterday, of course, before the game was even over, I had Philly 500 texting me and, you know, smiley faces. We had all of the eagle trolls of the usual suspects here talking about how the Cowboys are frauds today. I I'm going to say, don't slip up and lose to Atlanta tonight because this is remis reminiscent of the Cowboys losing to the Cardinals last year and the Eagles joking all season about us losing – to the Cardinals, and damn it, they didn't lose to the Cardinals as well, which you could say that game right there was, had they won it, they would have been the number two seed and wouldn't have played, you know, that great quarterback, Baker Mayfield, mind you, who was 2-0. and um, I got trolled. I, I've heard some of you who have been a fan of Joe Boo Sports, even before I really did YouTube, may remember when Joe Boo was basically kidnapped by uh, the photographer Trent in New Orleans some years back, and I was beginning to wonder if Joe Boo was ever going to come back from Trent. Hadn't heard from him in years. First thing this morning, boom. And to make it even worse, I, I, th this is when this is when you know shit is bad. It, 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 I have to laugh at this because, you know, I've talked about that this week that Demario Davis and John Ridgway, um, that we can't be friends this week. I said, we can't be friends this week. 11 o'clock last night, okay? You know, after I finally shut all this stuff down, shut all of this stuff down, I get an Instagram message from John Ridgeway with the buggy eyes looking sideways. I'm getting trolled by the <laughs> New Orleans Saints players. How is this even fair? You see what you've done to me, the D Dallas Cowboys? You see what you've done to me? And Dak Prescott, damn it. Damn you, Dak. We paying you $60 million. Now, I'm a Dak Prescott fan, damn it. And I expect more from my quarterback. I, I, I can't believe, after all the money to Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb, that the Cowboys would allow this to happen with Dak Prescott. that Dak Prescott would give up 41 points, that Dak Prescott would, for some reason, bench Overshone where he only played in 18 plays as opposed to the 41 he played last week, that Dak Prescott made the Dallas Cowboys run on first down every single series, that Dak Prescott made Brooks slip coming out of his break and leading to that damn interception. That Dak Prescott told the defense to not put pressure on Derek Carr. That Dak Prescott literally, literally had the defensive line in the secondary. I can't believe it, Dak. Dak, you should be ashamed of yourself. 
you should be 100% ashamed of what happened. I'm, I'm going to take my medicine today. Okay, now I want you to know, here's what I want. I, I want to say this. I want to say this with feeling here because, see, there's some of you out there that I like to refer to as cockroaches. By cockroaches, I mean, if you've ever had a cockroach infestation, you can go in a place daytime, you don't see anything unless they're really nasty and they just don't care about cleaning up the, the cockroach trails, which, ugh. But when you turn off the lights and it's safe for the cockroaches not to get crunched, that's when they come out because they know they've got free reign, that there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it because it's dark and you're not there. And that is those fair weather fans that come out. Those ones that only show up when it's bad news. Because, see, here's what happens for, for me, you know. Um, of course, when the Cowboys have bad game, my numbers go through the roof. Oh, my God, the trolls come through like crazy. And here's what's happening, of course, today is, you know, everybody's going to focus in on the Dallas Cowboys getting mollywhopped by the New Orleans Saints. Everybody's going to talk about that. It'll be maybe a footnote about the Lions losing yesterday or the San Francisco 49ers losing to Sam Darnold. Those they won't talk about. It'll be like only the Dallas Cowboys were the ones that lost. And the thing is, is see, the Cowboys still have the same problems that they've had before. Now, I'm going to say a couple things here with this. Now, you know what? I'm going to finish taking my medicine. I'm, I'm going to listen to Shannon Sharp for a minute, okay, who who literally says that uh, the Cowboys got embarrassed, and he would know something about being embarrassed since he accidentally went on Instagram Live while he was doing the nasty. Since they scored 91 points in two games. Through three quarters, the Saints have averaged nine points, almost a little less than 10 yards per play. 35 points allowed are the most uh, uh, is tied for the most given up through the first two quarters. Uh, they tied us because we put 35 on their ass in 98 at the half. Last year, the Cowboys allowed 35 points in just one game. Carr was hardly touched. Neither was Alvin, who scored four touchdowns. Let's take a listen to what Dak had to say after the embarrassing loss. That's simply why you can't listen to, to other people's opinions and read with you guys. You guys right, respectfully. I mean, yeah, you, you know, y'all may have put 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 it, put this team on a high more more than we should have been, and now we, we just simply have got to reset. We've got to respond. Uh, we're not going undefeated. You know, I mean, hadn't been done in 50 years. We were surprised. So uh, it's about getting back to it um, and and finding a way to respond uh, to put the best team on the field next week. Hey. I I tried to prepare you for this, Ocho. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I told you, I said, Ocho. I'm going to let you go, but I want to say this. Yeah. We, we talk about the Cowboys. We'll start with the defense. Uh -huh. I said, look, I wasn't really that impressed with the Cowboys offense last week. I said they got a punt return, and they got you know a, a couple of turnovers to put them on short right. fields. I say the defense looked really good, but I say I would really like to see them if they had the starting tackles in there. Mm. I say because what happens if you if if, if you can hold up? Okay. That's, that's all I'm going to take is Shannon Sharp today. That's all I'm going to take. Again, this is the Monday morning walk of shame. And um, back to the cockroaches I was talking about here. See, here's the thing. My team got mollywopped. We looked like shit. We got beat in all phases of the game, although I do have a big positive that is lost in this, but I'll talk about that later. Right now, this is just this is cathartic. This is, you know, get it out of your system and things. Get, get pissed off, so to speak. Here's the thing, win, lose, or draw, I am still them boys. I am still a Dallas Cowboy fan. I may not enjoy what happened yesterday, but after we lost, I was still here. I was still here taking the abuse. So all I ask in return is if you want to come through and troll me and tell me how bad my team was, when they do good things, and mind you, they will be doing some good things, you also have to give credit where credit's due. That's all I say. Don't be a cockroach. 
be here and man the F up when you F up. So, the thing I'm going to say on this is, the Cowboys seem to have one of these type of games every year that everybody jumps off the ship. That everybody, oh, the season's over with, man. And, and they, they, they've they counted us out. Last year, it was after the Cardinals game and after the 49ers game. We got embarrassed by the Cardinals. They literally ran all over us. We couldn't do a damn thing. To the Cardinals, we got beat down. And everybody, to a man, came in on Monday and joked us and talked about how bad we were. Cowboy fans, I'm done with this team, man. We stink. I can remember the year before Dak Prescott against Tampa Bay. Before before he broke his thumb, the team wasn't doing shit. He breaks his thumb, and we look like some shit. And everybody, to a man, season's over, we're done. Cowboys sucked, even with Dak, and now we got Cooper Rush. They joked us, they clowned us. The season's over. Remember Stephen A. <laughs> the season's over. <laughs> season's over. But they got a chance. Made the playoffs and at least avenged that first loss to Tom Brady and sent him into retirement with a bad taste of his mouth of the Dallas Cowboys beating him. So, that was a bad game. Bad game. And everybody's going to have one of those games where you question what the hell was going on and so on. And I will say, like I always say, don't get too excited or too upset by what you see the first month of football. Are the Cowboys as bad as they were yesterday? No. Are the Cowboys as good as they were last week? Probably not. They're somewhere in the middle. And they're still figuring things out. They still have a lot of young players, a lot of new players, and a new scheme. And they ended up walking into a buzzsaw of a veteran team that came in and looked at this as a great opportunity like everybody does when they play the Dallas Cowboys. We always get everybody's best. And what the Cowboys need to take away from this is you cannot rest. You have to bust your ass and you have to play 110%. There's no relaxing here. There's no overlooking anybody. Because if you're a team that's bad, you can make yourself feel pretty good if you beat the Cowboys. And understand, the media loves the Dallas Cowboys because they went from trashing us to telling us how much we sucked and how we don't have the players before the Browns game to Super Bowl aspirations last week to now this week being the clown show. Yeah. So we're somewhere in the middle on there, like everybody else. We got Baltimore this week. That's a chance for some redemption. Baltimore, they're 0-2. San Francisco is 1-1. The Lions are 1-1. We'll see. It's a long season. And now, let me finish up with the clown show. Yeah, my hair is jacked up. I'm just like, because I'm pulling my hair out. Let's listen to the clown show here. 35-13, the final score 44-19. The Saints and a laugher. And speaking of laughing, Stephen A had some fun. (laughs) The season's over. <laughs> Week two, and it's already started. <laughs> how about them cowboys? All right. So it's like you. How is it?
is it so funny? It is just Because you know it's, what it is. I know, and yet it is. It's like a movie you've seen a hundred times, and yet the line, the writing is so brilliant, it still makes you laugh every single time. Okay, let's say they won 16 straight at home. That is a regular season stat, to be clear, because Green Bay is still running the ball from that playoff loss last year, and now it picks up right where it left off. So we spent all yesterday morning on Sunday countdown. Oh, Mike Zimmer, he has changed this Dallas defense. Maybe not so much. Yeah, no, and, and when you go back, he was brought in. We did say he was brought in to stop the West Coast style of, of, uh, of offense. Offenses, exactly which this. Is every team in the NFC, right? right? Okay, and... We, we were praising him because it won game. Now, look, he obliterated two backup tackles with Cleveland and all that, and then we're going to call him, we're going to say Mike Zimmer's buddy Ryan. All right, he ain't Rex Ryan. And I'm going <laughs> to tell you something that's concerning to me. Yeah. The last two years that Mike Zimmer was a, was coach in Minnesota, yep. they ranked 29th in total defense. The last two years. So if you think he's damn buddy Ryan, he, he ain't he ain't. You know, okay. Rex Ryan or Rob Ryan. Are you Who do you think you are? Nick Saban? Hey, he's a boy. Over there. Okay, Pat, here we go. So, Dan, I want to give you credit. I, I will pat you on the back so you don't have to do it. You sat in that seat on Thursday, and you told me this New Orleans offense, what they want to do is exactly what the Cowboys yeah. struggle with. Have they made the changes and adjustments to be able to stop it? And we got the answer. Absolutely not. So, one – Two teams yesterday announced to the NFC that they are here to play this year. Minnesota being one, the New Orleans Saints being two. They are mm -hmm. for real. Here's the issue with the Dallas Cowboys. The, the spine of this defense is weak. They're weak in the interior of their defensive line, and they're weak at the linebacker position when they're playing against teams like this. Shrink your splits down, get under center, motion and play action. There's the shrunk splits. Here comes the motion. Ball's going to get snapped right when he's there. You're going to get the play action. Second level defense is going to get sucked up. That pass rush has got seven or eight guys pass protecting. This is an easy throw for Derek Carr against those crossers. Out every one of these, you're going to see the defender trailing that receiver. Here it is. Shrunk down splits again. Watch the motion. Ball's going to get snapped right when it's behind Derek Carr. Play action. Now you're displacing people horizontally and displacing people vertically. Look at the pocket for Derek Carr. There's eight guys in protection, only four rushers. Derek Carr trusts the Rashid Shahid speed. And again, look at those defenders trailing from the outside. Cut splits. Motion. Snap it when he's behind the quarterback. We're going to get play action pass again. And you're going to get the crossers from the outside leverage of the defenders. These are, look at the pocket by Derek Carr. I feel like I'm watching the Packers game in the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. It's the same exact stuff. You could change the coordinators. It didn't, didn't work. The, the issues with this football team, motion, misdirection, play action, cut splits. They struggle with it. Can I give a shout-out to Clint Kubiak? No the doubt. Oh, coordinator no doubt. With the, uh, for the New Orleans Saints. Yes. He, he, Father Gary Kubiak comes from that Shanahan tree. And, what, and, and I mean, look right here. I mean, just pounding. They were just pounding Alvin Kamara against that, that Dallas Cowboys defense. And when you're able to impose your will and run the ball like that, what is this set up? So it's the play action, everything. everything. The play action pass. Dan already alluded to it. Yeah. Green Bay. We saw that what happened last year. Runs it. Tampa Bay runs it. Oh, that's, is that all? That's six right there. <laughs> there's, probably, there's probably a couple more. Right, that's what I mean. So, so the answer to the question, Rex, that's bad yeah. game or bad sign, is underlying bad sign? Well, yeah, it's a bad sign, but I thought it was just a bad game. But, I mean, look, I, I, I mean, you're right. D. Wood is 100% right. Run the football, it sets up everything. Why is Derek Carr so clean in the pocket when you've got they two of the best the pass football. rushers in the league? Why? Because they're playing a run. And they have to. And they're getting seven or eight guys blocking yeah, them. Five yards on the field before you're stopping anybody. Totally. And to me, we thought it got fixed. We brought in Kendricks, who's going to run this Mike Zimmer defense. He knows it. We're bringing a true linebacker in and all that. Well, guess what? You still got your tails whipped. And to me, that, that's a concern. But I'm like, this team's got way too much talent. Do they, though? Me, they do. do I mean, this here's... team literally, in my opinion, the last three years has been as talented of a football team as there is in the but, National Football League. But, but you know what, Rex? 
To me, this defense is built to play with a lead. They are. That's what they, all those guys want to do is rush the passer. Right. Michael Parsons wants to rush the passer. Do you think he wants to be sledgehammered to death and in in, 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 in bludgeoned to death in the run game? And see, to me, that's the problem. You got a team. If you got a team that can jump on the Dallas Cowboys, it's a wrap. Because yeah, that here you got to earn the you. right, guys. You have to earn the right to rush the passer. And so that means you got to bow your neck and bully and stop the dang run. Hembo, Hembo, check something. Check how many yards they got before contact the Saints. Oh, I guarantee you, dude. it's probably like they average four yards per carry before contact. This, yes. this isn't. They, they struggle at the point of contact between tackle to tackle to hold up against the run game. That's exa exactly what they do, and it's what they did last year. That's how I was able to tell you on Thursday. They are going to struggle schematically against a team like the Saints. I'm going to put it on the screen. I couldn't understand. He was trying to say it in my ear, but I couldn't make out the word. So just put it on. All right. I've done enough walking of shame for today. There we have it. Cowboys, we stunk up the place. It's one game. One of 17 games. You have the opportunity to turn some shit around against Baltimore next week. And that's all I got to say, good people. All right, we've got all kinds of stuff that we'll be dealing with. Tonight we will be watching the Eagles, and um, hopefully we can see <laughs> the Eagles have some problems. I'm Mark Holmes, and it's going to be a rough week.